right. This week, I came to realize and remember and recognize once again just how important seeing is to God. Just reading through my Bible and doing topical word searches, I saw again that God is a God who himself sees. Does he who formed the eye not see? Does he not see my ways and count my every step? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth? And realized, like the writer in Genesis realized, you are the God who sees me. I've now seen the one who sees me. God is a God who sees, and God is also a God who cares about your and my ability to see. Jesus said and prayed, Father, I want those you've given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory. And then in another place said, He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. And God is a God who sees, and God is a God who cares that we see, and God is a God who acts on what he cares about in terms of our ability to see. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. And the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. And then in another place, then Ananias went to the house and entered it. And placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. So Jesus wants us, wants you to see. He sees you and he wants your vision to be clear so that you can see him and know God and so that his light can enter into your life and transform every bit of it and make you more real so that you can find your way and find yourself and find him and find yourself. And Jesus is God's corrective lens that gets dropped in front of your eyes that enables you to see clearly an unseeable God. And he wants us to see both spiritually and physically, as though those were two separate things. And sometimes he helps you to see through an optometrist. In the Old Testament, there's a story about Jacob meeting his brother Esau after having lied and stolen Esau's birthright. And Jacob is understandably freaked out about reconnecting with his brother, who he figures is hugely mad at him and might even kill him for what he did to him. And he's afraid as he approaches his brother. But then when he meets Esau, Jacob is blown away by his brother's accepting response to him. And Esau basically says to his brother, hey, don't worry about it. Which then leads Jacob to make a very insightful observation. After being so graciously embraced by his brother in the face of his clear deception, he says this. He says, For to see your face, Esau, is like seeing the face of God, now that you have received me favorably. For to see your face is like seeing the face of God, brother. Jacob saw something of God's heart through how Esau responded. And so it's with eyes like Jacob this morning that we look at the heart of God through the vocation of an optometrist. For to see the face of someone who cares about helping us see better is like seeing the face of God. And optometrists are made in the image of a God who wants you to see. What they do for our physical eyesight is a point or two and a foretaste of what God can do for the whole of our vision. So God, open our eyes this morning so that we can see, really see, 
who you are. Those could be the words of a blind man in the Bible or any spiritually searching soul over the millennia or they could be the words of a person who's struggling with cataracts and astigmatism or nearsightedness, which comes from the word myopia, which comes from all of our hearts. So, this past week, I have been in conversation with Dr. Sean Wilson, who's an optometrist here in Calgary and also a member of New Hope Hillside. I love it when two, join, two churches join together because you get a whole new people with new vocations that you can preach on. And as we spoke together this week, the last couple of weeks, I caught several glimpses of God's heart and mind through his heart and mind and passion. And the first was through the holistic nature of what an optometrist does. Early in our conversation, Dr. Wilson wrote, First off, I would like to point out a misconception that many people have about optometrists. Most people think we make prescriptions for glasses and contact lenses, and that is it. And while that is a very important part of what we do, most optometrists would think of themselves more from a medical perspective, as the eyes are so integrated with the rest of the body. The eyes are often the first place that connects that, that conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, brain tumors, etc., will show up. So a lot of what we do is very medical. And as he as, he, as I read his words, even as I'm reading them, I'm thinking of Jesus' words where he draws an intimate connection between our mouths and our hearts and says, what comes out of the mouth gets its start in the heart. So when Jesus heard people with deranged, broken words, he knew they had heart problems. And also, Jesus' words in Matthew 6, verse 22, came to mind. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy... Your whole body will be full of light. So again, Jesus showing how it's all connected. What goes in affects it all. What comes out is indicative of it all. Your vision physically affects light in your life. Your vision spiritually affects light in your life. And so our eyes really are a window into the health of our whole beings, physically and spiritually. If you cannot see the blackboard like I did for the first 11 grades of school, oh, Lord, I could have been brilliant had I had glasses (laughs) earlier. If you can't see the blackboard, your learning is going to suffer, and you become a smart aleck who sits in the back row and hangs in the smoking area. It's all connected to glasses, I'm sure. If you're filling your life visually with all kinds of unhealthy images, consumerist, lustful, pornographic, your soul will shrivel. If you can't focus on the words on the page that you need to read, then you're going to fall behind. And if you can't see your daughter's or son's face clearly, then you're going to be less than fully you. My dad has macular degeneration, and so now he can't drive. For the last seven or eight months, he's not been able to drive. And his vision is broken, badly broken. And, uh, you know, for my dad, driving was it. We used to go for rides all the time, Saturdays, Sundays. Dad would drive, and now he can't drive, and my heart breaks for my father. And he will never likely drive again. Because there is no cure. And we talked a couple days ago when he said it all happened so slowly. And less, for him, has become the new normal. Darker and dimmer. What life now is. And sometimes, with our vision, I've learned this week from Dr. Wilson, things can be going terribly wrong before we even notice that they're going wrong. Sean told me that often patients with glaucoma will be forgetful or slothful when it comes to taking their medication because they don't sense that they need the treatment. The symptoms aren't noticeable to them yet. And as he's saying those words, I'm going, yeah, that's how sin works in our lives and in our world. 
in ways that we don't see, imperceptible, incremental, small, tiny darknesses and darknesses and darknesses with very real and potentially very detrimental consequences. And less becomes the new normal. Darkness replaces the light. And you and I can't see it happening. We have no idea. I got to visit Sean's office and see all of his cool gear. And one, to see all of his cool gear, but two, to take all kinds of pictures for PowerPoint. My PowerPoint. And I realized what's amazing about what he does is that, and they do, optometrists can see more deeply into things than we ever could. They have a depth of insight that is truly wonderful and amazing. And who of us can see the insides of our own eyes? And who of us can see the slow, incremental, destructive work of sin and darkness? This next picture is one of my retinas, which one is it, Sean? My right. I knew that. Which is uh, very healthy right now. And you think about it because your dad's got this thing and it's in your family a bit. And, but this is very healthy. So that light spot is my uh, optic nerve. And then over in this area, right, Sean, is the macula. And there are somewhere around 30 million cones, cones and rods, remember that in high school, in the macula. The retina is the only place in the body where we can see blood vessels in their natural state, Sean told me, which is why I guess you can see high blood pressure and diabetes and tumors. This next image is a fuller picture of the back of my eye, and so the retinal scan you just saw is just a small portion, 20% of this image, and the light area is still the optic nerve. And you can see my eyelashes in the top there. And Dr. Wilson talked about how awestruck he was with the complexity of the eye and just amazed at how it all works. He wrote, an image is focused through the cornea, which then gets transmitted through the iris to the lens, which then needs to focus that image onto 10 layers of the retina, which then transmits that information to the visual cortex in the brain. And then there is the fact that we have two eyes and how much more complex that makes things. Something so complex and intricate points to an intelligent design and a God who has thought out every single detail from start to finish. This next shot is called an OCT image, Optical Coherence Tomography. I googled it. It's a submicroscopic scan of a slice of the back of my retina. So that's in me right now, and you, too, for lots of you. And it was here that Dr. Wilson showed me how he'd notice macular degeneration if it got a little white in this area. And it isn't, but it is for my dad. And this next slide shows a sampling of how technology, married with great software, uh, analyzes the health of my eyes. So they take one multi, you know, few second long shot, takes a slice of the back of my retina, and bang, they have all this information with which to analyze and diagnose, all through one OCT scan. And the whole time he's showing me that, and I'm awestruck by how deeply Sean can see. I'm reminded of how much more deeply God can see. And what the best technology of our day, married to the best science we have, married to the best practitioners on the face of the planet of our time, can see how that is almost negligible next to God's unlimited percep perceptive capacities. Now we see things imperfectly, as in a cloudy mirror, the Apostle Paul writes. We can't see the full spectrum of light. None of us can. We have blind spots. The optic disc, I read, were mortal and 
our lenses are skewed by the darkness of sin. Now we see things imperfectly as in a cloudy mirror, but then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete, but then I will know everything completely, just as God now knows me completely. God knows you completely. God sees you perfectly. And God wants to help the whole of who you are. When I asked Dr. Wilson what he loved most about his job, he talked about the people and the help that he brought, brought to the people. A young woman came, to, came into my office, he writes, saying her contact lenses weren't, weren't, weren't working. I had just done her exam three weeks earlier, and everything was fine, but in the last past two days, she couldn't see out of them. Checking her prescription showed a huge change from three weeks earlier, and along with some other symptoms, I suspected diabetes. I sent her to the hospital. When she was tested, her blood sugars measured 40, which is ridiculously high, and she was admitted until they were normalized. She came back three weeks later specifically to thank me for catching that. And when I asked him, why did that feel so good, that story, he said this, and listen for the heart of God in this. To me, it is finding something that isn't as it should be, and that something is also unknown. Figuring out the problem and being able to be part of fixing it. The emotions go from uncertainty when you realize there is a problem to that aha moment when you figure it out to a deep sense of satisfaction when you are able to be part of solving that problem and setting things right. Dr. Wilson and optometrists and all healthcare professionals image a God who finds something that isn't as it should be, something unknown to us, figures out the problem, and fixes it. And for all we know, God experiences an aha kind of joy in the fixing, much like an optometrist would. And surely Jesus had those moments when he healed the blind person's eyes. Can you imagine being used in that way to heal somebody? You don't think his heart was bursting. <laughs> Maybe his eyes were filled with tears at the power of God bringing that kind of restoration to that person, giving them a life. Dr. Wilson also told another story. He said, I had a young girl in for an exam who was struggling in school, particularly reading. I determined that she needed reading glasses and had her come back for a follow-up before school started in the fall. I did the exam in June. And when she came back, she proudly told me that she'd read over 100 books in the summer. Clear vision enables a light-filled and flourishing life. I mean, so many people think that having faith and believing in God and following Jesus is all about rules and restrictions and strict obedience and a no longer any fun kind of life, when in fact it is the exact opposite. You get to see things and know things and have light move in you and transform and shape you in ways like you've never known before, knowing him. In Christ, we have the freedom to really see and fully become human and, and then read hundreds and hundreds of books and have the entire tra trajectory of our lives eternally changed. Do you have eyes but fail to see and ears but fail to hear? And don't you remember? There's something in you that remembers what it once was or what he made you, your eyes, for to be. Isn't there something in you that thinks, I'm destined for clear vision again one day, perfect sight? Teach me what I cannot see, God. When I talked to my dad this week about the, all the beautiful ways and positive ways optometrists image God's seeing and healing heart, 
he agreed and listened, and then he also rightly said, but John, you got to know that sometimes there is no healing and no restored sight. And knowing my dad, I knew what he was saying. And when he said it, you could hear it. Sadness and hope. We, we didn't even talk about it, but knowing my dad and the strength of his faith, I could hear it. He, he would love to have his vision back. And he knows that one day he will. C. I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears it tingle. I'm doing a new thing, and now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? The glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Your eyes will see the king in his beauty and view a land that stretches afar. And although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more. With your own eyes you will see them. All you people of the world, you who live on the earth, when a banner is raised on the mountains, you will see it. And when a trumpet sounds, you will hear it. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. Hear his words, saying, See, I will create a new heavens and a new earth, and the former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. And all God's people, all people will see God's salvation. All right. For the next five minutes, I'm going to talk with Dr. Sean Wilson. Where is he? He didn't bail. He didn't. <clears throat> a little bit about his work and have a seat. More, uh, more about how the idea of a job as a parable um, impacts how you do your job, whether it does or, or doesn't. So Sean's already worked through all of his joke responses, and he's going to hopefully give me a straight answer on this. But first of all, thanks for this week. That was awesome. It is, uh, yeah, really. Sean said to me, you got the best job in the world. You get to walk into the math teacher's life and just live that, or an optometrist, or uh, different vocations. So yeah, I, I do, and this, this week was a big part of that. So my one question is, um, so What? So we have this conversation and emailing back and forth, and we try to unpack how your job images God's heart and is a reflection of that and does God's work in the world is a parable. Um, does it make any difference? Does it, um, and it, maybe it's early to integrate some of the stuff that happened this week, but what runs through your mind um, in response to that question? Um, I think it's, uh, you know, I think my standard answer if somebody had said to me before, you know, how, to, how does being an optometrist, you know, be like God? I would have said, well, you're helping people, right? And, and just reflecting this week, I think that's certainly a big part of it. But, uh, you know, even you know, what you were talking about out there, some of the stuff that when you just look at how intricate, you know, the eye is or, or you know, what I'm doing as, as work, how many things I can see in, in, a, in a week or a day, um, it just shows how focus and how into our lives God is, right? He, I mean, the eye is so complicated and he's designed all of that. And so how much more does he know us? Hmm. You know, because just even one little part of our body is so complex. Um, yeah. So. Cool. And my thinking is, and maybe this is a little too mystical for day-to-day -day work as an optometrist, that, that when you're doing an OCT scan or looking at that, looking deeply into the health and... Uh, all that's right and good and intricate and beautiful in a person's retina. Um, is that a moment where you can um, kind of co-experience a presence with a God who sees deeply? Um, be worshiping, um, not out loud, don't break into dance or song, um, but you're like, like the moment is pregnant with a uh, presence, a kind of presence that doesn't distract from the, uh, the diagnosing, but kind of enhances and 
makes you more fully you. I think your job, uh, you as a person of faith in that job, is, are meant to be fully shone, right? And fully feel um, joy in every facet of the work. So not just being moral and ethical and good, but knowing God in the seeing is something that you uniquely do. And I'm wondering, I mean, does that ever happen? Could that happen? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think just trying to reflect God, right? I think that's just, that's part of it, right? You, every piece of information you get, that's coming, I mean, obviously that's your own analysis and science and, and that type of thing, but that's, that's from God as well, right? So. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, I think five minutes was the promise, and we're already at that. Okay. Um, I mean, the hope is, is that through this, you can know God more at work in more ways, more full, scientific, medical, uh, and moral and ethical ways, all of that together. And the hope for us is that we can know God more, because now we're going to go to an optometrist whenever you go next, and they're going to look into your eyes, and you're going to be reminded of a God who looks into your heart deeply, and together we know God more. So thanks again for the thank help you. this week and uh, was fun. for what you do, man. Yeah, thank okay. you. All right. Let's pray. Like you did for the blind man on the side of the road who couldn't see Jesus, touch our eyes now so that we can see like you did for the prophet when he could see your armies surrounding the city ready to protect and keep and pray, let my servant see that. Let us be that servant. Let us see that, that your kingdom is here. Your kingdom has come. You fill the whole earth, heaven and earth. You are all-powerful, all-seeing, almighty God. Give us eyes to see that. And God, do whatever needs to be done in terms of diagnosing the problem. Examine us. Uh, tell us the hard truth, if necessary, about what's keeping us, our, our vision uh, muted or darkened, disintegra disintegrated or broken, out of focus. Speak that word by your Spirit so that renewal could come and a prescription could come and your Spirit could come and make us whole and new and alive and seeing again so that we could see your face. Like how a blind person, first given sight, would see your face. Tears pouring down their faces, seeing their maker, the maker of all eyes, the maker of all vision, the maker of all things, looking back at them. Help us to see your face, we pray. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.